Welcome back to another episode of Lake Show's Finest Redux. I'm your host, Charles Ryan, KB24 status, Kobe24 MP3, or yours truly the biggest Lakers fan in the whole world. Um, I can verify this by you guys looking in the description at that second link that says... Lakers Man Cave uh, Tour, Studio Tour, whatever it's called. So the Lakers kicked the Warriors behind tonight. I'm not going to talk about this game too much. This probably will not be a very long podcast. You know, my podcasts usually average probably, you know, 25, 20, 25 minutes. I've had a podcast that's gone on for an hour, and that was last season. It was actually my Kyle Kuzma evaluation video. And ironically, he's the only player of all the evaluation videos I did that ended up being on the team this year. So kind of a lucky thing that happened. Um, Well, speaking of Kyle Kuzma, he played pretty well tonight. First quarter, I'll be honest, I wanted to run on the court and kick him in the you-know-what. But it didn't happen. I didn't have to do that. I didn't have to fly out to San Francisco to do it, to pay tickets to an overrated Chase Center. Um, But, you know, I have Draymond Green on my fantasy and when Draymond got ejected in the second quarter with five minutes left, he probably he had two early fouls, right? So he probably only played a total of eight minutes. That just really screwed up my fantasy right there. I really could have used his steals and his uh, assists. He already had one block, I think, as well. Um, or maybe he was one steal, I'm not sure. But, you know, I, I, I don't understand. And, and, you know, Charles Barkley made a great point at the half saying, he doesn't even think he was healthy and wanted to keep playing. That's why he was ejected. So maybe that is why he got ejected. And the weirdest thing happened was in the third and fourth quarter, the Warriors only had two people sitting on their bench. And after a timeout in the third or fourth quarter, uh, I think Marquis Chris, Chris and somebody else got a technical foul. So maybe those two guys, Marquise and the other guy, got pissed off and decided to go to the locker room, or maybe they were ejected by Ken Maurer, the ref. Um but I don't know. AD had 23 points. Kyle Kuzma had 18 points. Rondo had six assists. You know, AD had 15 points in the first half. And I really wanted him to finish with 35-plus. But he didn't have to because the Lakers actually played like a team uh, towards the end there. So, you know, kudos for pulling it together in the second half. But, you know, versus a team like that, you got to step, uh, step on their neck early so you don't have to you know, pull it out of your tushy in the third quarter, fourth quarter. But I'm pretty sure LeBron, like, yelled at them or something at halftime because this was absurd. I mean, they were playing guys on 10-day contracts, Dragon Benders on a 10-day. They played this guy named Michael Mulder, I think his name was. He's, like, little skinny white guy, like, or I don't know what he was, albino something, light skin, on a 10-day uh, Andrew Wiggins was hurt with like a back injury. So really it was just Draymond Green and a bunch of scrubs, rookies, and 10 days. So, you know, I'm happy they won by 30. But I w- that was the most stressful 24 minutes of a game I- I've watched in a while. And I was actually like literally like, I never get pissed off like physically while watching a game. But like I was like really like, I don't know, like really uncomfortable that this was happening. It was actually very, very unsettling that I was watching a team just not really care. And, you know, Dwight was the only guy in the first half that actually was playing his heart out. He had, like, 9.7 rebounds, I think, like, an assist, two blocks, and a steal in, like, the first... in his, like, first 15 minutes of playing time. So give give Dwight credit. Um, but, you know, Kuzma came through. AD kind of did his thing early. I, I don't know what was going on with AD, but... Yeah, um, you know I'm happy. I'm happy the Blazers lost tonight. Um, also happy the the Kings lost because I really want to play the Pelicans. Um, you know, Bl- Dame Lillard almost got hurt tonight, and that would have been catastrophic for the Blazers. But you know. That matchup, Lakers Blazers, is a no can do in the first round. 
But, you know, Lakers just got to keep playing like this. When LeBron's out, which he will miss games. In the final, like, couple of weeks, I can see him just missing games just to rest up. You know, Lakers can't just be all chill and all that going into the playoffs. They need to really play hard. I, I loved how Quinn Cook, you know, really played his heart out in his 10 minutes. He's not going to get those opportunities again, but good for him. Markeith Morris played solid. Uh, KCP played really well, lots of steals. Caruso, lots of steals. You know, I think KCP and uh, Avery Bradley are like kind of like the mini X-Factors. They're both really underrated. And I don't know what happened to Danny Green because it seems like he's non-existent or something is going on with him. You know, I, I really like Danny Green. He's even on my fantasy. And in the first half, he had no shot attempts and, like, one rebound, and that was it. So I don't know what is going on mentally with him. He's a two-time champion, but he's got to be better. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really want to talk too much about the game, really. We play at... Memphis and then at New Orleans and then we head home for six games at Staples and then we go on a five or six game road trip um, we play Memphis and New Orleans like I said I think we should get both these games I believe Memphis and New Orleans is a back to back so I wouldn't be surprised if Braun rests again I mean the Grizzlies do have Ja Moran still but they're without, I think, they're without Jaron Jackson, but there's somebody else they're without. It's not Dylan Brooks. It's, like, some of their guy is pretty solid. I forgot his name. He's, like, really improved player. But, you know, I, I, I don't know if Braun rested just to rest up or he actually had an injury, but why not rest up again and just play one game? But, you know, Braun's, Braun's good. I, I can see him just playing two, uh, this back-to-back. But yeah, we only have, we're 45 and 12. We have 25 games left. If we just go 18 and 7, we'll have 63 wins. That's kind of nice. Lakers haven't had 60 wins in a while. It's been a while. Um, but... Yeah, this Lakers squad drives me nuts sometimes. But I'm really glad Braun made the trip to San Francisco. I think he could have easily stayed home and then met, met up with the squad in Memphis. But I'm happy he was there to get in the team's uh, ass. Um, Yeah, I don't I don't know what to say about else about this game. It was like a really, you know, flush game down the toilet type thing. Um but yeah. I'll do a quick Lakers story time. I haven't done a Lakers story time in a while. Uh for those of you who are unaware, I just talk about Lakers stories that I've had personally in my life. You know, I'm really fortunate to be from LA, so I've been around a lot of Lakers, you know, situations, not not just games, but events and you know, Lakers summer camps and, you know, bumping into players and areas and autograph sessions and all that. But this story, I might have told it before, it's a Luke Walton story. And in this story, there was this Lakers event at the LA Convention Center. And my friend's dad runs the ESPN, like the Noches Latina one, the 1330 thing. And this event was during March, the Noche Latina Lakers event. The Noche Latina, Latino uh, NBA, you know, Pride Month for them. And Luke Walton was there with his friend Kareem Rush, who was on the team at the time. This is like 2006. And, you know, because my friend's dad owns the ESPN station or works for it or whatever, or runs it, uh, you know, we, we had a little private, like, you know, private hangout with Luke Walton and Kareem Rush and Devin George outside, and they were all just smoking cigarettes. So I thought that was completely outrageous for 
three guys, NBA players, to be smoking cigarettes. And I thought it was hilarious. I was only like 11. This is 2006. Right now I'm 24, Kobe's number. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that was kind of funny. And I took a picture because I was 11. I was a stupid little 11-year-old kid. And my friend's dad, who runs the station, you know, ESPN hosted the event. Um, he told me to take a picture with uh, of me, take a picture of him and Luke Walton. And my finger was over the camera. And I didn't say anything because I was too scared to t- speak up. But So good job by me. <laughs> but yeah, Luke was really nice. Nice guy. Devin George is nice. Kareem Rush was kind of handsy with my friend. I mean, sorry. <laughs> handsy with my friend. I brought my sister with me because, you know, I was, I was only 11. So I was like, hey, you know, bring, bring some family too. And he was kind of hands you with my sister. My sister was like 19 at the time. You know, eh, not like that kind of handsy, but, you know, a little bit touchy. Um, <laughs> so I thought that was funny. But, yeah, you know, NBA players, they probably smoke cigarettes. I mean, they all smoke weed and, you know, fuck every single night at a hotel. Excuse, excuse my language. But, yeah, that was a interesting experience. And then... This was the same year as the Kobe buzzer beater. Uh, first round, game four against the Suns, when the Lakers went up 3-1. And then they ended up losing the series anyways to Steve Nash. But yeah, that's the story time. I'll do another quick one. I don't think I said this one before, but I've been doing podcasts for like three, four years, so I might have. But I was uh, a, a coach at... Derek Fisher Basketball Academy, prior to being the Knicks coach and now the Sparks coach. He might still do it, but he'd run a ca- that camp, Derek Fisher Basketball Academy, in downtown L.A. at this high school called Roy Ball. It's in downtown L.A. It's like a really nice high school. Like, it kind of has the feeling of a college campus. And it's like the gym was huge, and there was hundreds of kids, and I was a coach there, and... Uh, The day Ron Artest signed with the Lakers, because he wasn't traded, the Lakers signed him. This is 2008 or 2009? 2009. No, 2010. 2009. So I was like 14, 15. Um, uh, I, the, the camp was going on while the, while the signing happened, and I went up to, to uh, Derek Fisher, and I said... Hey, Derek, are you worried, you know, you guys will get in a fight with, you know, Ron Artest in practice, or you think you can handle his physicality? I said something like that, referring to Ron Artest's insanity. And he was joking, like, yeah, you know, it'd be a great piece, and that's the politically correct answer. But uh, I remember that story. Not that exciting, but just a funny thing, you know. Getting, like, an instant reaction from a great Laker about signing uh, one of the most controversial players in sports history. So, yeah, that's the podcast. This is a shorter one. You know, it's only going to be about 16, 17 minutes long. But we play the Grizzlies and the Pelicans. We have to win these two games. I Right now we're on a seven-game winning streak. So there's no reason why this can't go to nine or ten or win all six at home after this and you know, go to 15. <laughs> Why not? Um, it'd be nice to be rolling hot, obviously, into the postseason or into that huge road trip we have. But we got to get these two. You know, if we're going to lose to a team, you might as well just lose to the Pelicans. Maybe the Lakers want to lose the Pelicans on Sunday so they can help them, you know, elevate them into the standings to get to the eighth seed. Maybe that will happen. I think that'd be kind of hilarious. But you never know the way teams try to, uh, you know, drive for a playoff position. But yeah, once again, I'm Charles Ryan, Chuck, KB24 status. One last thing before I go, I posted so many Kobe montages to honor Kobe. Please check them out. It's not about me wanting views because I don't really make that much money from this. This is all for fun, but it's just really about, you know, showing appreciation for this guy, and I really try to show clips that most people probably haven't seen in a while. So I show some clips clips from 96, 98, 
when he was the number when he was the number eight, I show some you know really cool buzzer beaters. You know, Kobe's had so many. Uh, but please check those out. I really want you because I want your guys' feedback. It's not about me wanting views, me asking you, to p- begging you for some you know monetizing bullshit or likes. No, I, I just want your guys' input. Do you like this one? You know, it's a montage, right? So it's a lot of editing and you know maybe zooming in on you know the play clock when he hits the buzzer or you know picking the audio to go through it, syncing the audio with certain plays. So I like your feedback. Do you guys like, you know, the 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 background music? Maybe you don't. Let me know. I really appreciate it. Okay, once again, KB24 status here. Go Lakers and peace.